Well, good morning and welcome to our webinar, How to Build a Strong Cybersecurity Program. Uh, before we start, we do have a couple of housekeeping items to review. Everyone's muted, so there's no background noise. Uh, there is a Q&A window that's available for use for any question or comments that you may have. In addition to introducing our guests, I'll also serve as the moderator. There'll also be a time available after the webinar to ask any questions, and we'll either answer them during the course of the webinar or even set up a time to answer your specific questions that you may have. Now, our contact information will be provided at the end of the webinar for you to get in touch with us here at LAM Tech. In addition to our live webinar, we'll also provide a link to the recording. So should you want to review anything that is shared today or maybe you want to share your knowledge with another person or a company, uh, we'd appreciate that. You may refer LAM Tech too. Now, without further housekeeping items, let's go ahead and get started here this morning. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm Doug Sokolowski. I'm the account manager for LAM Tech. We welcome you and thank you for your time on today's webinar. Uh, LAM Tech uh, aligns IT solutions with our growth initiatives. We do some of the things that you see on our screen. We align IT solutions. Uh, uh, so you can focus on your day-to-day -day business and stop expanding your problems. So we deal with things like managed services to maintain your security, your help desk support, consulting, as well as data recovery, along with backup device, uh, backup services, that is. Now, today's overall theme is looking at the importance of cybersecurity and how you can prepare your business. Over the years of me just talking with businesses, companies, and people in general about their business model, I've had countless people not only ask about things like cybersecurity, which is important, but also about the cyber insurance side of things. Today, we have an expert and partner on that topic of defense in the intelligence community, uh, cybersecurity, IT, and cyber insurance. We're going to be talking with John Reith, who is here with us this morning. He's the partner manager in licenses insurance agent at DataStream Insurance Experts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring in our expert today, John. Good morning, John. How are you today? Hey, Doug, I'm doing beautifully. How are you? Doing fantastic. Ready to learn more about things uh, going on, not only with how we set up uh, cybersecurity, but uh, the overall program, the importance of insurance today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to dive into this topic. I mean, it's definitely, you know, a topic that's on the, the forefront of a lot of people's minds, and I'm sure there's uh, lots of people out there uh, curious to dive in. So, uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and I should be able to go ahead and share my screen here. Oh, I may need the uh, I may need you to stop sharing real quick so I can pull up uh, my slide deck. There we are. Share. Here we are. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we all have a pretty good understanding that, you know, um, SMBs have been targeted, right? There's all kinds of scary numbers and statistics, you know, that I could dive in, um, but I think quite a few of us uh, have maybe even burned out on uh, hearing kind of the scary side of things. I think we're all fairly familiar with it, and if anybody wants to dive in to those uh, statistics, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, we can, I could jump on a call or, or do something like that. Um, but I think we all have a, a fairly good understanding that, you know, um, things have changed, and SMBs are being aggressively targeted uh, by cyber attacks. And one of the big questions is, of course, why are SMBs targeted? And number one is is really the same as the big guys too, right? You have some money to steal, right? Is the is the number one reason, right? You have some money, and they want to get in and steal that, right? But the second two reasons here have really started growing with this development of what we now know is ransomware, right? The ability for a bad actor to get into your system um, and potentially, uh, you know, grab secrets. You have some secrets that could be revealed, right? That you don't want revealed, right? Confidential data, um, personal information of, of uh, clientele, that type of thing. Or you just can't afford to actually be down, right? Think of the energy companies or some of these big guys, or, or, or excuse me, even some of these small guys, right? That need to be open all the time right and going down or being shut down actually means massive like revenue loss and uh, obviously really aggressive negations on their reputation and all of that good stuff right so we've really seen the growth of these last two reasons uh with the the growth of ransomware 
Now, the big difference between, say, the SMBs and, and the larger guys, right, with all of these reasons, is that SMBs are still still really underprepared, right? Um, still really in the mindset that, you know, you're small um, and, you know, it won't happen to you, right? You're too small, nobody's really going to pay attention. Um, but what we're seeing is, unfortunately, that's just not the case, right? Um, we have seen that growth. So how do we how do we come about and solve this problem? Well, we you know like to think of it in two steps, right? Reducing the overall risk and then transferring the risk, right? Um, we love this metaphor of uh, you know kind of the fire uh, space, fire as risk, right? First, you have um, to reduce the risk. You got those tools, right? If you do have a business, you got uh, you know smoke alarms and sprinklers and fire extinguishers, right, and things like that that are gonna overall reduce the frequency and potential severity of one of those fire incidents, right? But we also all invest in this collective resource that we all know as the fire department, right? For when those catastrophic events that really get out of hand. And the same concept works, right? That's really what insurance is, is transferring that entail risk um, that is just often too expensive to cover on your own, right? We can't all afford to have our own private fire department, so we all collectively pool our resources together via taxes, right, to actually have a fire department who can come and save us if it does get really, really bad. So how are we going to reduce this risk, right, that first step? Well, that's the tools, right? That's the tools and technologies um, that you're going to invest in to boost your cybersecurity, right? So investing in these basic controls are so important for reducing that overall you know, frequency and severity, just like fire. That's exactly why um, you, know, you work with an expert to get some of these tools in place to try and avoid the actual potential of having that incident, right? So we're going to invest in our cybersecurity program by getting some of those basic cybersecurity controls in place, but also understand that uh, controls are, and these tools, they're just that, right? They're tools and technologies that are constantly evolving, constantly growing, but also bad actors are constantly trying to work, you know, ways around these, right? So planning for failure is also an important level of reducing that risk, right? Understanding what to do when that incident does happen is so crucial for reducing that severity side, especially, right? If you actually have those steps in place, you actually have, say, an incident response plan, right? Maybe a business uh, excuse me, business impact analysis. So you know, you know what systems you need to get back up first because they're crucial to your uh, to your business, right? What are the first things to get up and running? Um, these things are so important to think about ahead of time because ultimately is going to speed up the process, of getting you back up and running, and ultimately reduce the severity of that attack in the long term. So that's how we're going to overall reduce this risk, right? Now, how are we going to transfer it, right? Well, that's exactly what insurance is for. I mean, that's across the board. That's exactly why insurance was even created in the first place. And cyber is no different, right? Once you're utilizing tools and technologies, those can do a great job of covering, you know, 80% of the risk. But that last 20%, 25% of the risk is extremely expensive to try and even, you know, get close. And almost near impossible, I can make the argument, near impossible to get 100% protection, right, out of just tools and technologies. At that point, I mean, the expenses is exponential at that level, right, to get 100% coverage. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to transfer that last 25% of the risk by by grabbing a cyber insurance policy right knowing that even the the best cyber security programs fail just like we talked about having a multi-layered approach is including that cyber insurance policy to catch you when you fail right cutting out that tail risk that we have um you know that 25 percent there um this risk of course uh you know is is the the type of risk that is your your cat catastrophes right that's really what those are right is in case that major fire right going back to the metaphor that major fire that that you need the the fire department right to come in uh to come in and save you there and pull you back out so 
So what are the differences in insurance, right? So now we know, okay, maybe we do need to look into getting some cyber insurance, but what are the differences? You know, I've heard about general or a business policy, right? Or tech you know, uh, versus an actual standalone cyber liability. And I started including this slide because it was just such a common question that I got. Um, and I think it's important to help people understand that, you know, general liability, it actually used to cover cyber. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion really came in with a lot of business owners because it did. I mean, back in the day, it really did. But it made a hard cut at, in uh, 2014. Um, it really started adding these hard exclusions for cyber. And now it's a, a hard exclusion against cyber and cyber has become its complete own standalone policy, right? General liability now is still great for, um, you know, the vast majority of business risk, but now, you know, is really not designed uh, to cover cyber attacks and the type of things that a cyber liability policy is gonna cover. And then tech E&O is another one that I often get. Um, and the, the difference there is, of course, the tech you know is going to protect you against um, mistakes or, or um, you know, things that a, a person on your employment actually forgot to do um, in relation to a technology, right, that you have implemented for a client and it actually either harm that client, um, you know, if it was a, a cyber technology, you know, could have harmed their reputation, something like that, um, or if it's a physical technology, could have even harmed them physically, right? So tech you know is actually going to protect you against mistakes or, you know, kind of negligence, things of that nature that will actually potentially harm a client. Where cyber liability, what it is, is it's designed to pull your company back after a cyber attack, right? It's designed to protect you against these attacks and bring you back to where you were before the attack actually happened. So what does that mean? What does, what does it actually cover, right? Okay, so it covers these attacks, but what, what exactly does that mean? What exactly does the policy cover? And a cyber policy, when it broke off and became its own standalone policy, um, they did so um, by br really bringing in three uh, individual kind of sub risks and categories to cover, right? Those being data breaches, business interruption, and cyber extortion. Of course, data breaches being, uh, you know, kind of your typical attack that's going to happen, trying to get in, maybe um, get some uh, get some money out of you. So, of course, the cyber policy is going to cover all the response and remediation that is involved with that, including, of course, any legal fees, uh, the fees that may be incurred with the regulators, authorities, all of that good stuff. For business interruption, right? That's the cost of your business going down, right? If you do get held by ransom, somebody comes in, shuts your whole business down, right? It's gonna cover that cost for actually being down, including, you know, obviously maybe getting new computers and that type of stuff, but also the actual cost of downtime, right? The loss of revenue, um, even the uh, salaries of employees, overtime of employees that might be needed to get the, uh, the business back up and operating again. And then cyber extortion, of course, is going to be the ransomware side of things, right? So covering your side, uh, covering your business when you are held hostage uh, by a ransom attack, of course, paying that ransom, but also covering, you know, any of the legal fees, um, uh, any of the specialist fees that, you know, may cost to bring some IT guys in, um, even uh, uh, PR folk. It's going to cover uh, PR folk, you know, the fees that are incurred for bringing on a PR team to help with the reputation rebuild, right? And and maybe some of the work that needs to be done there to start rebuilding the reputation. So uh, incredibly broad. Something I hear often is, you know, um, how often, you know, don't cyber policies, aren't they narrow and barely, rarely pay out? Um, but once they that's really a stigma that really came from the times when it was under the general liability. <clears throat> the, in those days, they were um, really narrow and always looking uh, for, for the exclusions and often had really hard exclusions in the policies. Um, but now once it broke away, we have an incredibly broad policy that is gonna cover uh, all aspects of, a, of an attack and uh, do its job to bring you back after an attack hits and puts you back to where you were, uh, you know, before that attack happened. That's another thing, uh, question I often get is, you know, why isn't it, you know, shouldn't it also cover any of the new technologies after an attack that I need to put in place? Um, but no, you have to remember insurance is designed to bring you back to where you were before the attack. So if you didn't have those technologies in place before the attack, uh, it's not gonna pay to get you in those technologies in place after the attack, right? 
Now, how should SMBs navigate this landscape, right? We have an idea of, you know, the threats that are out there and, and how to potentially deal with it, but how should you as a business owner really go in and navigate this landscape? Well, number one is, and something I think is uh, something, you know, I've been already kind of hounding on, of course, is getting the cybersecurity house in order, right? And doing the things we've talked about, investing in your actual cybersecurity program, understanding that it is a new world, right? It is a different world that's, uh, that we're moving into. Um, as more and more of this business world, you know, moves into the cyberspace, there is only going to be more and more bad actors out there trying to take advantage, right? So making sure that your cybersecurity house in order is now a necessity of, of doing business in this world. It really is. Um, and to do that, it's truly important to get high quality advice, right? You guys, uh, you know, you're a business owner. You don't need to become an expert in the cybersecurity space. That's exactly what, you know, folks at LamTech are, are for. And on the insurance side, folks like me and over at DataStream are for, right? We're experts in that space. That's exactly where you lean on us for, right? You don't need to go out and become an expert in the space. You need to find a, a trusted expert that knows the space that you can talk with and ask your questions to and can bring some of the conversation, you know, down right into a, a you know not necessarily even layman's terms but at least a, a conversation that could more easily being understood without necessarily having to dive in and absolutely understand all the acronyms of you know the security and the and the insurance space right that time you know is better spent on your business and working on on that which is where you guys want to be anyway right is focusing on on owning your business right so getting qu high quality advice talking with an you know an MSP expert like Lam Tech and then on the insurance side somebody over at DataStream is all too important um, because especially right now uh, from the insurance side of things particularly you don't want to ruin your reputation um, you know with this shift. You know, as more and more people, you know, bad actors are starting to go after SMBs, and more and more SMBs are looking to get insurance now. Um, the carriers are able to be um, picky, right? They're able to be a, a, quite a bit pickier. They now have, you know, hard requirements. Some of those controls and technologies are hard requirements, right? Um, a couple examples: a good MFA and good offsite backups are two hard requirements right now pretty much across the board right um for example so working with a an expert to get these technologies in place and then on the insurance side understanding what is needed of you to you know what is needed of you to get in place in order to actually get that policy is all too important right nowadays it is is just a necessity to to have an expert in order to make sure that you have all these steps in place they're being handled appropriately and that way, you know, obviously you're completely set up. You have a holistic approach to cybersecurity. If, you know, God forbid anybody happens to get by the tools and technologies, you have a really solid cyber policy there to catch you. And if you're doing all the right things and working with experts, we're making sure to keep track of how you, you know, you answered those questions on your application, making sure to keep track of, okay, we have MFA implemented. Let's take a screenshot and actually record that, you know, every, you know, six months or something so that we have a record going back, proving that we have all these things implemented in that way. If we do ever have an incident, very low chance of it getting denied, right? If we can prove out all the things that we said at the time of application, it's actually very difficult to, to get denied by, by an insurance uh, carrier, um, right? As long as we have, have those records and we were doing all the things that we attested to, you know, suddenly it's the big bad carrier coming in and saying, well, trying, scrambling, trying to figure out a way if they are truly gonna, you know, trying to figure out a way. To, to maybe find an exclusion. But we have found that if you're working with an expert, um, this is very rare to happen. All of the stories that at least I have personally heard of people that have been denied, um, the, the most uh, common occurrence of this is when they, you know, they grabbed a cyber policy, you know, they got it in place. Sometimes they just click, you know, yes, 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 to some of these cybersecurity questions when, you know, maybe they didn't, right? Or maybe they did have MFA, but, you know, after a while, it just got kind of thrown to the wayside, right? And uh, wasn't necessarily implemented, um, you know, after six months or whatever. 
um, these are the things that are going to get an insurance, a cyber insurance claim denied, right? Um, they're, they're very difficult otherwise if we are doing all of the right things that we, we said we were doing at the time of application to get denied. So all too important to make sure that we have these experts in our corner backing us up, making sure that we're doing the right things, working together, right? Maybe actually in communication with each other, working to make sure that you have a, a holistic approach uh, to to your cybersecurity uh, as a whole. Now that is going to you know bring us kind of to the wrap here. I really like to leave you know these with a lot of great question you know a lot of room for questions and answers. Um, and if we don't have too many of those, I will dive into some of the most common ones um, that we get because I still I, I think there's just a lot of ambiguity out there around the cyber insurance space and unfortunately you know even you know especially right now i think a lot of people you know kind of out there trying to snag some up um but not necessarily understanding what's what's actually covered in it you know there are still uh, policies out there that are you know loaded up with exclusions and, and things like that and so uh, that's another absolute another area where you know having an expert to to dive into some of these policies and explain to you what the exclusions are, how they might come about, how they could be played out, and if that's the best policy for you to be having um, is so important too. So um, that's something that that we do all the time is uh, what we like to refer to as policy reviews and uh, you know sitting down with a, a a customer who even already has a policy chatting with them, maybe, yeah, explaining some some questions they might have or pointing out some exclusions that we see, you know, like, you know, one of the, the big ones we see often now is um, some of the carriers are thrown on like an exclusion for ransomware, right, which is not something we like to see. Um, we like to see full open limits for ransomware coverage because ransomware can get very expensive very quickly. Um, just think about like the, uh, the cost of downtime, right, if you were down, uh, for even a couple weeks, right? What would that cost to you, right? Unfortunately, so well, I'll go ahead. Yeah, hey, John, and and that's yeah. one of the things that when when we get involved with a lot of times is that you know is it the right policy for that organization? And you know we can answer all the technical questions on there, but then it gets turned back around on a technology company is well, how much coverage do I need? And yeah. is my existing policy you know, strong enough for, for my book of business. And that's that's where, as a technology company, we have to stand back and say, we're not the right people to answer that uh, for you. And so those those questions, we, we get asked all the time, and we just have to defer those to, you know, an insurance agency. And that's why you guys are so important, is you can take a look at what type of company or organization that's needing this insurance, the cyber liability insurance, and seeing what they need to, to be fully covered. Yeah, it, it, exactly, right? And and comes right back, yeah, it's a great point. It comes right back around to, yeah, the, the need for, for kind of an expert, whether it be us or, or some <clears throat> sort of insurance, you know, expert to sit down and take a look. If you already have a policy in place, have somebody really dive in, you know, and somebody who ideally un also understands, you know, your company as a business, right? And can sit down with you um, and get an understanding of what your risks truly are as a company, right? And start to think about that. Um, and that's and that's how you want to go about this because of, uh, yeah, because of these types of exclusions that can be tucked away because of the limitations that can be in some of these policies. Um, it is a, a, you know, a newer space, the cyber insurance space. And so often having multiple carriers as well is really important because um, the the policies are are similar, right? But what they cost is right now pretty different across all different carriers. Um, and so you could be sitting there and chatting, you know, with a local broker, um, but maybe they only have, you know, one, maybe two carriers that they're working with. Um, and so you really want to try and get out there and do some shopping because some of these carriers, what's happening is they're actually trying to leave the cyber space, right? They used to offer it, but after the last, really the last couple of years or so, you know, um, they're, they're trying to leave it now. 
And so what they're doing is jacking up their prices really high, um, trying to push customers out. And so if you're only looking at, you know, one carrier and not the entire market, kind of like an, you know, an expert or somebody over here at, like us at DataStream who, you know, works with really all the carriers out there, um, you know, is that's where that shopping is going to come so crucial, right? And that ability to dig in to your needs as a, as a business and actually find a carrier. There's carriers now who are tailored to industry and size and all that stuff. So these are the things that we are going to take into consideration, right? As we're going out and shopping for a customer, two of the biggest um, contributors to any policy are going to be size and industry. And that is because, uh, you know, industries have their own individual risks. And so, of course, there are specific industries that are, uh, you know, a vastly higher risk than others. others. And so they're at kind of a different end of the spectrum there. Um, and then, of course, size, right? One of the big things that we already mentioned was that's covered in a cyber policy is that loss of downtime, right? So that that revenue that could be lost during an actual ransom event where they shut you down and are, you know, holding you hostage, uh, they're actually going to cover that, right? So they're going to want to get an understanding of what, you know, what your annual kind of revenue is, right? Because they're going to be covering that. You know, they want to know on a monthly basis, like weekly basis, what that's going to look like, right? So having an expert, you know, dig into this right now is is really important, especially as cyber insurance is continuing to grow and evolve. And we will see it change. Um, and that's exactly what what's so important, right, is because we are going to see it change in the next few years, you are going to want to stay up to date right on these requirements i mentioned right those those will continue to change in the future right so having an expert to go to say okay are we doing all the right things right and we're making sure we're, we're we got all this covered um and then making sure to have an expert on the technology side who is actually implementing those right and actually making sure that those are up and running um and that you're doing all the all the things that you said you're you're supposed to be doing uh when when you actually applied Yeah, great, great point though, George. Yeah, I loved it. But I'll go ahead and uh, uh, pass this back. I think I could pass it back to. Oh, that's uh, not that one. Let's see. Stop share. There we go. Well, we'll double check here just to make sure we don't have any other questions. Uh, George, you have any more things that we run into all the time? Well, like, some things were just at the beginning of the year, we've seen that dynamic shift in the forms that we've had to fill out for what's required for that organization um, just to get a, a, a quote or just to be covered for cyber liability insurance. Um, and we see a lot of confusion as well as thinking, you know, that that slide that we had up about the E&O, the difference between E&O and, and cyber liability insurance. And, and every time the industry takes a hit, they have to break a section out. And, and now cyber liability insurance is so important to, to keep, you know, to keep things running, to, to get things back on track after an event happens. And each... Each time we fill out a form, something else changes what's the new requirement. And in each different vertical as well, whether it's a financial institution or a nonprofit, they have different requirements uh, to, to purchase cyber liability insurance and, and everything has a cost associated with that. So that's that's one thing that's important why we reached out to DataStream is, is because they can, they can take a look at that and see what's needed for that organization or that institution. So it's a... It's a hot button for sure this year, and it, it's not going to go away. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, I mean, and some some folks out there may even have seen this this change. You know, if you happen to apply for you know cyber insurance, even just a couple of years ago, you, yeah, you would. It was like a you know almost a checkbox. Basically, you could you basically get a policy on on the back of a napkin and. Um, yeah, just such a telling sign of, of the, the times we live in where just this this change from from that, right, being basically written on the back of a napkin to these, yeah, exactly what you're talking about, these risk assessments that we're seeing now come out of the carriers. I mean, some of them, you know, 15 pages long of questions. 
Um, and that's actually one of the things we try to do here at, at DataStream, right, is uh, bring some of that terminology and some of those questions uh, down into terms that are a lot easier to understand because we have an idea of what the carriers are, are actually looking for, right? And, and uh, I think it's so important to, to kind of dive in and, and get an understanding because uh, we've just seen also too many customers, you know, just go out and, and grab a policy, which is great, right? Love to see that. Um, but then also, you know, grab a policy that's with a carrier that might be, like I mentioned earlier, exiting the market, right? So how we've been able to save some customers some, some, some money was literally just doing some shopping, right? And, and being able to have that spectrum right now uh, while the market is new um, is so important because uh, right now, yeah, we've saved customer once like uh, $10,000 a year because that's what they were paying uh, for this, this policy. Um, annually, but there's still plenty of, of perfectly decent policies out there, you know, for you know, a decent decent business to give everybody an idea. You know, we don't in the insurance world really get into specifics, but um, always like to give people an idea. The typical cost for cyber insurance is still, the other thing is still not extraordinarily expensive. Um, one question I always get is like, you know, well, well, why should I go with you guys versus my local broker? Um, or, you know, like, I don't really want to leave our local broker and we're not here to step on any, you know, local broker toes, but we've just seen that shift so aggressively. Um, and it's, it's like I mentioned, just not super expensive still. So for them, um, it's such a tail end of the dog. We've actually started partnering with some local brokers uh, because for them, they see us as the experts in cyber and because it's still not extraordinarily expensive for your typical business, you know, they're not making a ton of money off of it. So if they can send them our way, um, and get them the, the, you know, the expert kind of uh, touch on the cyber side, um, it's all, all the better for them, right? They, they love that and make sure that it, you know, since we're exclusively cyber, um, it doesn't leave their account. So it's been cool. We've actually started even partnering uh, with some of these local brokers, but to give you all an idea, like, you know, your typical business for a, a million dollars worth of coverage, which is honestly like the, really the base that we really start with any size company um, is going to be really a million dollars in coverage. Um, and that's really a result of ransomware. Uh, ransomware just made such an aggressive jump um, that now these attacks can be so costly um, that a, a million dollars in coverage is really kind of the base that we like to start anybody out on. And a million dollars in coverage right now for a typical business, it's going to be between a thousand to to um, 3,500 annually right now, right? It can get up to the $7,000 range for some of the, um, you know, some of your vice type companies, credit card companies, that type of stuff, you know, can get more, more than that 3,500 range. But your average typical business, you know, is it's still not, it's not extraordinarily expensive. Um, and so it's important um, to, to have those options and know that not all policies out there, are, you might be, you might see a, you know, $10,000 policy for you. Uh, they're not all like that, right? That just might be one of those carriers I mentioned that are actually trying to exit the cyber market right now. But there are still plenty of great, great options out there that are actually entering the market and, and focusing specifically on it. Well, John, it looks like we don't have any more uh, questions or comments, but uh, I know that in, in your line, there's probably a lot of specifics. And uh, as we are <laughs> partnering with you, I think that uh, uh, we'll be glad to point people in your direction to answer some of those specific questions. Because like George pointed out, when I'm talking business with people and they, they, they give us that list and they say, well, what if I don't do this or I don't do that? And I said, that's going to be a question for your cyber liability and how far you're going to be able to be covered and things like that. So, but uh, our job is to reduce all those risks and help them out in the long run. So, John, thank you for your expertise today. Uh, and uh, appreciate data stream insurance experts as well. Um, do hope that uh, if you are a current client, if you want to see how you, what you learned today pertains to your agreement, you can uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, if you're wanting to learn more about Lamb Tech and our offerings, uh, you can also give me a call direct at uh, 660-851-7342. You can also email me as uh, you see up there on the page. Uh, and you can also learn more at lambtech.com. Thank you for your time, and uh, we hope you have a fantastic day.
Absolute pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Yeah, it was awesome getting to to chat with you all, and and uh, love partnering with Lamb Tech, and excited to uh, to work more in the future and get a get a couple more of these webinars. But don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, if anybody wants to talk more, has any questions, uh, reach out to Lamb Tech, and they'll uh, connect you over to me.